became a career firefighter with the Howard County Department of Fire and Rescue Service, the chief of the medical division or EMS, the unofficial historian of the Howard County Department of Fire and Rescue Service, over 65,000 digital images and newspaper articles, magazine articles, etc. Episode 24-21, Merrittsville, the Choo Choo Boo Boo number two. As we discussed before, actually there are quite a few train incidents, train accidents along the borders of Howard County, the northern border, eastern and southern border of Howard County over the years from the 1860s until about 1960, 70 or so. There are quite a few train accidents that occurred, causing quite a bit of damage, loss of product, and loss of lives. Uh, there was at least one train accident that occurred that killed about 25 folks down near Hanover in the Elk Ridge area. And there have been multiple other train incidents that occurred. The last episode showed a train crash derailment right in downtown Merrittsville, where a train derailed and the Cars piled on top of one another, damaged several buildings, cars, etc. The two locomotives, which were steam engines, they overturned and uh, caused quite a bit of damage. With multiple train crashes around Howard County, the worst that I've been able to find and most tragic was down in Hanover in the 20s, I think, where at least 25 people were killed and dozens and dozens were injured. Today, we'll be talking about uh, another crash in Marriottsville, that seems to be a popular place for significant derailments. And on this particular time, occurring on May 15th, 1943, there was a major derailment along the tracks near Marriottsville. Multiple cars were derailed. Of significance was that several of the rail cars were carrying flammable liquids, oil, gasoline, uh, and such, which certainly created a, a significant hazard to the uh, firefighters and an environmental hazard to the uh, area. Uh, the Patapsco River on this particular picture is to, off to the left, so I'm sure there was some runoff that did contaminate the, the river itself. Units drafted from the uh, nearby water source creek near Merrittsville. Not sure exactly where this picture is taken, but we have an Ellicott City unit on location, Engine 4 and a Baltimore County unit on the scene, and they were both pumping water to supply water to, to the fire. Another picture of firefighting operations. Firefighters are training master streams uh, on the fire. As you can see, two master streams. Of interest with this is, as you're looking at it, uh, you see some of the firefighters holding down the hose in somewhat protective gear, and then you have a bunch of other folks that uh, are just there to help uh, with no uh, protection whatsoever. I guess that's how things were done back in the day. Two firefighters wearing asbestos suits from back in the day, asbestos aircraft suits that were reflective aluminum that in theory would reflect any heat, etc. Challenge was you also had to wear breathing apparatus, which sometimes is rather, rather cumbersome at that point. Again, same picture, but a clear picture of uh, firefighters uh, holding the, the lines down uh, with several master streams going. Some of the people in line had protective clothing, others did not. So I guess that was just optional. Again, looking at this, uh, we, we can certainly see the fire is certainly gaining intensity. A couple of firefighters sort of near the scene, many civilians away. Uh, I guess at that time, of knowledge or concern about a blevy, boiling liquid uh, explosion was not uh, as, as concerning as they are today, and history has proven. But you can see a couple of tank cars tipped over, heavy fire occurring, uh, probably impinging on the cars themselves. And I'm just hoping that there's not going to be a catastrophic explosion, which there was not. Again, firefighters, two firefighters in the asbestos aircraft suits. And then immediately behind them is a poor guy that has no protection whatsoever. So uh, should something catastrophic occur, maybe the two people in the suits might survive. And then the poor gentleman in the back, he'd be on his own. But that was firefighting back uh, in the 40s. Again, master seams are being applied. One firefighter is holding the hose. I think that's a police officer in the hat and trench coat. 
and another individual, civilian or firefighter without any protection whatsoever. So obviously tactics back then are much, much different than they are are today. And safety concerns are much different today than they were back then. Again, the two gentlemen with the Nomex asbestos suits on, with the, at least one master stream, and then in very close proximity in back of them or some civilians manning another hose with virtually no protection whatsoever. And again, I'm making a judgment with these folks in hindsight, a different time back then. It's almost 80 years ago. Uh, but it's certainly interesting to see how those operations were back then. Again, still master streams being applied. Some people have protection, some don't. Again, another master stream being applied. A, a civilian, possibly a, a cameraman staring at the scene, uh, still would have been within the red zone or hot zone. Uh, and had that cut loose, so that it had definitely been a hot zone situation. Again, back looking at the intensity of the fire is growing. An image taken from afar. You can see the tank cars have overturned. I'm not sure if the all the way to the left between the pole and the edge of the picture that looks like that might be the engine that has overturned at least one engine that has overturned and then the other cars as you can see overturned and several heavily involved in fire it looks like uh, right in the center of the picture a tank car with significant impingement on the car with the end of the car pointing towards us, which would have made for an interesting situation, a very interesting photo should uh, that tank car have uh, cut loose and uh, been flying through the air, being propelled by its contents. Back to the fire, a couple of firefighters in their suits. And uh, again, that was a train incident back in May 14th of 1943, and uh, how we fought fires back then, significant fires back in the day. I'll be going over in the future quite a few other train incidents that have occurred within Howard County. Most of them were property damage, and there will be several fatalities that occurred that I'll be able to discuss. Please use your remaining heartbeats wisely and not waste a single precious one.